Welcome to another episode of Game Time, presented this week by Nusenda Credit Union. I'm J.P. Murrieta, and this week we are at Volcano Vista High School, home of the Hawks and their football team and head coach, Chad Wallen. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. You're off to a 2-0 start this season. Is the season playing out and the team performing the way that you thought they would when you started summer workouts way back when? So I think we're progressing the way we'd like. Um, definitely coming away with a win in Las Cruces is big. Tough place to win. Uh, last week played a very improved, very tough West Mesa team. Uh, felt really uh, pleased with the, with the results. Um, but we've got to get better week by week. And we've got another tough one when Carl's bad this weekend. So we've got to have a great week of practice. You mentioned the win against West Mesa, 29 to 14. What did you like about the way your team performed in that game? Uh, every time that they seemed to gain momentum, our team did a good job of responding. You know, they had a drive that was, I think, 98 yards, went in and scored, kind of made the game a little closer, and our offense came right back, went down the field, and, and regained the lead to two, to two scores. So the way we responded in that game, I was very pleased. And responded with a lightning delay. Tis the season we're going right. to get lightning right. delays in football. As a head coach, how do you keep your team up? How do you prepare them for getting back out on the field and getting them, that momentum going again? Uh, it worked out for us this time because it gave us an opportunity to get in the locker room and make some adjustments. Uh, it happened four minutes minutes before halftime again they had momentum so for us it really it was a benefit for us this time um, in the locker room we just want them to rest hydrate and mentally get ready for the adjustments we put in tell me about your running back Elijah Gonzalez a train did you come up with the nickname a train and what kind of players no he's had it since he was a kid from what I understand um, he just runs hard he's very athletic and quick uh, he's probably one of the most competitive kids I know so when we hand him the ball we know we're get, we are getting all he has you are arguably in the toughest district in the state, have been, with the likes of Cleveland and Rio Rancho. How difficult and challenging is that? Is it frustrating kind of having to battle them year after year after year? I think over time we've learned to adjust to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're first put into the district playing people that are outside of APS, um, learning to adapt to the advantages they have, we, I feel like we've done a good job of shortening that gap. Speaking of playing out of district, you have Carlsbad this week. What do you know about the cavemen and what are you working on with the guys this week to kind of improve and uh, progress? Very, very physical team. Um, they're, they're a very blue collar community. So we know they're gonna come up and they're gonna be very aggressive. They're gonna be very tough. And I don't think um, our, our mental approach can be anything but be ready to handle that type of game. We need to be ready for four quarters. And that type of game, it's one of those Saturday 11 a.m. starts. Right. How do you prepare your team for that? And what do you like or dislike about those uh, Saturday games? Saturday mornings are always tough because it's out of our routine. Um, with the new school schedule for APS, we've been practicing in the morning. So hopefully this Saturday, this first Saturday game of the year isn't such a, a, a challenge for us. Do the guys like these morning workouts during the week before school? I, don't, I see some nods. I don't think they did until <laughs> we really got into the routine, and now I think they like them. We haven't missed anything for lightning, and that's always in the evening. So, Well, whatever you're doing, it's working. Undefeated so far. Good luck this Appreciate week. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll be back with more game time after this. Are you living the life of an athlete? The New Mexico Activities Association brings you Life of an Athlete, a resource for students, educators, and parents to understand the challenges students face. Athletes, one night of drinking will negatively affect your athletic performance for two weeks, and athletes who drink or do drugs are twice as likely to get injured. Alcohol's effects can reduce a high school athlete's potential by as much as 20 to 30 percent. Are you living the life of an athlete? Log on to the website to find out today. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. Hi, it's Kian Vanderbilt from Volcano Vista. Welcome back to Game Time. Week two of the high school football season is in the books. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights and we'll start with a rematch of last year's state final between La Cueva and Cleveland. The last time these two teams met, they scored a combined 136 points. This matchup wasn't the same shootout, but the Storm beat the Bears once again. Cleveland's defense shut down La Cueva. Stratton Schufeld had a pair of interceptions. Cleveland has eight picks on the season. The Storm improved to two and zero with a 27 to seven win. 
Artesia senior Frankie Galindo had quite the performance last week against Hobbs. Frankie found the end zone five times. He had one touchdown reception and four rushing scores. Artesia beat Hobbs 42 to six. The Bulldogs have scored 97 points in two games. The 2-0 Artesia Bulldogs are at Boleyn this Friday night. Manzano beat Boleyn 16-7 in a game shortened because of the weather. Josh Nieto and Elijah Barber each scored in this one. The Monarchs face the Trisco Heritage on Thursday. Bernalillo beat Espanola Valley 26-18. One of the highlights of the night was this punt return touchdown by Nathan Insinius. The Spartans are unbeaten two weeks in and take on Del Norte this week. Moriarty picked up their second straight win last week with a 26-14 victory over Albuquerque Academy. The Pintos scored in every quarter in this one. Moriarty travels to Newcomb this week. On Saturday, Rio Rancho bounced back from their opening week loss by putting up a 40 spot on El Dorado. Anthony Raymer had three touchdowns in this one, but it's worth showing this impressive one-handed grab by El Dorado's Josh Jackson that led to an El Dorado touchdown. Rio Rancho won the game 40-26. Hatch Valley made the trip to Albuquerque Academy to take on Hope Christian last week. The Huskies put together a late rally to beat the Bears 23 to 20. Hope Christian will face rival Albuquerque Academy on Saturday. Last Saturday, the Sandia Matadors picked up their second straight win, beating Piedra Vista 16 to nothing. The Matadors will battle the Bulldogs of Albuquerque High this week. Albuquerque High is coming off a rare week two bye. St. Michael's beat Capital for the 18th straight time. Quarterback Reed Bass threw a pair of touchdowns in this one. St. Michael's with a 28 to 20 victory. The unbeaten horseman will see Santa Fe on Friday. Hi, uh, my name is Elijah Gonzalez from Volcano Vista High School. Uh, we'll be back with more game time after this. Do you love sports? Do you want a front row seat for exciting high school sports action in New Mexico? If the answer is yes to either of those questions, then becoming an interscholastic sports official may be right for you. The New Mexico Officials Association is looking for individuals age 15 years or older to serve as officials in 10 different sports. No experience is necessary and training is provided. If you're interested, call 505-923-3110. That's 505-923-3110 or go to the website nmact.org and click on the Officials tab. Welcome back to Game Time, presented this week by Nusenda Credit Union. This week, we're at Volcano Vista High School. The soccer season is underway, and last year, the Hope Christian girls capped off an undefeated season with a second straight state title. And this year, they returned their leading scorer. If you're on pink, let's go down on this side. If you're not on Hope pink. Christian is the two-time defending state champ in Class 4A girls soccer with pressure to three-peat. We don't really talk about it, but yes, I think that in the back of everyone's mind, it's there, right? You don't want to be the one that, that lets everyone down that, wow, we started this really cool thing and we're not coming through this. So I think that there's some of it there, but at the end of the day, you know, each team kind of, they kind of forge their own path. And so I hope that the girls realize that every day it's, you know, taking it a practice at a time and a game at a time. Hope lost three seniors from last year's group, but they have six seniors on this roster, including Savannah Sanchez, who has a knack for finding the goal. She's phenomenal, one of the best I've ever coached. Um, and as good as she is as a player, even a better human being and teammate, so loves the team atmosphere more than any kid I've ever coached. Here is Savannah Sanchez. And goal! Sanchez has more than 120 goals in her varsity career. She's also one to lend a helping hand with 23 assists last season and 24 her sophomore year. Savannah Sanchez, can she get number two? She dishes oh, it to Solace. Unselfish. How unselfish was that play? Amazing. What a beautiful ball dished off for the guaranteed goal. I love it. Selfless, right? And you wouldn't tend to think that with a kid that scored, I don't know, I think 69 goals last year. Um, She's very selfless. She always wants to get other people involved in the play. Uh, she'll come out and say, oh, we got to get so-and-so a goal. I mean, she's, she's just, she's selfless, hardworking, and just passionate. There is Savannah Sanchez, Created. and she oh, is a sure geez. thing. I've worked a lot more on my fitness because it's a big part of the game. I've worked a lot on finishing the ball, like placing it a little better and relaxing and calming down more. And then obviously looking for those passes to help the other teammates score. This year's group has seven freshmen and six eighth graders. Sanchez sees her role as a mentor. I just want to push them and show them that it's okay to make mistakes and we just all need to have confidence and make sure they have fun playing the game because that's the most important part. Hope hasn't lost in their last 32 matches, but coach doesn't talk about the streak. Nope, we don't. I just, I don't, 
they know it, right? So I think it's kind of the elephant in the room that no one brings up. I don't know that there's any reason to, um, but they clearly know it. I mean, there's no way they don't. But yeah, we just try to kind of prefer to go day by day. I think about it, and I know the other people returning from last year think about it. And we just all kind of, it's not that we don't talk about it, but it's more just like, let's continue this. Let's all work hard. Let's push each other to be better and just do the best we can. I mean, obviously, like, yes, we could lose a game, but at the end of the day, it's did we give our best effort? Hope Christian has already beaten A3A defending state champ Sandia Prep and 5A defending state champ El Dorado. Before we wrap things up this week, let's talk a little cross country. 28 schools took part in the Cleveland Invite cross country races this past weekend. We will start with the boys. Charlie Voss just moved to New Mexico in late June from Ohio. He runs for Rio Rancho High School and he made quite the first impression. Voss crossed the finish line first in a time of 1531. Rio Rancho dominated the field with four of the top five finishers and took home the team title. First mile, the El Dorado kid, also good job, I don't know his name, but uh, he went out pretty quick and I was feeling that he was like, he was kind of pushing it a bit first mile, so I just hung right behind him, let him cross through first, I'll just be right there within striking distance. Second mile, I put a little bit of distance on him, I made a surge, kind of by the people, and then just kept going at a constant pace, hoping he'd uh, drag off. And then uh, third mile, I came through and that's, all, that's just all guts, like, you just gotta suck it up and run. On the girls' side, Albuquerque Academy edged out Los Alamos for the top team score, but it was an eighth grader who made a season opening splash. Gianna Raymer won a pair of national titles earlier this summer, and on Saturday, running for El Dorado, the eighth grader was in the lead pack the entire way, and then in the final stretch, made a late push to cross the finish line first with a winning time of 18.30. It's really fun, I'm really proud of myself. I knew I was going to do well, but I didn't think I was going to do that well. <laughs> well, it was fun. I run with Chloe with my club team, and so I was really, really happy that she was there because I really like running with her. And then when she came up on me at the end, I was like, oh my gosh. So I just started pushing, and I thought I had more like of the race left to go, so I was glad that it was over when it was over. That's going to do it for another episode of Game Time presented this week by New Senda Credit Union. This week, we talked cross country, soccer, football. Next week we'll be on the road to talk some volleyball. Where else are you going to see so many high school sports covered in one place? You know the place to find the most high school highlights is right here. We'll see you next time on Game Time.